If travel is part of your retirement plans, why not add a few bucket list trips? These take a little bit more planning and we're involved in one right now, but we want to make sure it's all we want it to be. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a bucket list. So if you're going to do a bucket list trip, a bigger, more important trip, you want to make sure you do it right. And you want to make sure it's memorable. You don't want to rush through it. You know, if you take bucket list trips and don't plan enough, they can turn out to be part of your worst nightmare. Yeah. And we don't want that for us. And we don't want that for you. Now we hear people say, yeah, you know, my retirement's okay, but travel's expensive. Well, it is obviously it's cheaper to stay home and not leave your house, but we're going to show you ways maybe to plan your trip within your budget. You don't have to fly halfway around the world for a bucket list trip. You can certainly find some not far from actually where you live. So it's all relative, I suppose. That's very but, true. But, but don't let this idea of it's expensive. So don't explore it. We want you to try to explore it so that maybe you can pull it off. You know, the other thing we hear is my health won't allow me to do the things I have had on my bucket list my whole life. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe it's time to revisit your bucket list. Think about your current health and wellness condition. What can you change? What can you control? And then maybe find some physically less demanding trips until you get there you know, until you feel up to it. Yeah, you're right. And you know, the, the other thing that people say is I don't even know where to start right. thinking of where to go. Well, we're going to go through that today to give you the steps on how to really plan a bucket list trip. And it could be driving. Listen, I just, I was in Boston this weekend. It's an hour and a half away by car. There are probably 20 bucket list trips that I could think of. Right just in Boston. Right in Boston. Yeah. So that's true. anyway, if you're new here, I'm Mark and this is my wife, Jody. And we don't focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather your lifestyle, your health, your relationships and more. So do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, which is great. Then you'll get notified when the videos come out. But what's more important to us is if there are people in your life who you really care about that are on the same journey as you share this video and others with them so that we can grow our audience and get this information in front of as many people as we can. You know, we are, this topic is so timely for us for a couple different reasons. One, we are deep in the throes of the final stage of planning for a two year planned trip that we've had to go to Africa this August. And we August. leave six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks. I know. And it's very exciting, but we did start planning it two years ago. The other reason this is uh, topical is three people from our mastermind that we did two years ago have all taken a full year of bucket list trips. I don't know if you follow them all on social media like yeah. I do, um, but well, I mean, uh, Alana Sweeney has taken amazing bucket list trips. It feels like she is <laughs> on a bucket list marathon. I love it. And you know, they, they like to travel, yeah. which is great. And I know a lot of planning went into it. So another one in our mastermind, Anderson Baker, he's been on a few bucket list trips as well. So it came kind of to mind that maybe this is something we should help you guys plan. Right, right. Now, uh, down below is a free download, Solo Retiree Travel. And it gives a list of all the companies that we found that specialize in solo travel trips. So that'd be a good place to start if you're by yourself. But they also do other kind of travel, but give that list a look and see what, what you think. All right. So, so let's jump in. Okay. All right. We have a lot to get through right. and we got to hustle. Okay. So, um, the first thing I would say is define your travel goals, you know, understand what you want to get out of the travel experience and doing that would be your first step. Yeah. So do you want adventure? Do you want relaxation? Right. Do you want cultural immersion? Is it just you by yourself or you and your wife or husband or the whole family? Um, and, and maybe make a list of must visit destinations and have that available. And this, listen, the whole idea here is not to do one bucket list and stop, but just make a list and keep thinking about it. And, um, yeah, so that you have something to look forward to down the road. I also think once you narrow that list down, you know, consider what's happening in that culture, that country, that city, that village, that state, whatever it is. You know, consider any special events or festivals that they That's might be idea. having. So, like, for example, if you want to do a bucket list trip to New Orleans, I mean, go during Jazz Fest. Why yeah. not? You know, that or type Mardi of thing. Or or Mardi Gras, that's a, that's a big bucket list and I don't know. Well, it could be a bucket list item, could be. but I mean, it's uh, it could be a crazy time and it could be fun. Yep. You also want to keep in mind seasonal preferences. You don't want to go to 
uh, New York City in January if you can actually go there in June or July too. So I right. have to think about that. Okay. Um, putting together a budget for your travel. I know it's important because it's going to cost money. And if, and if you don't, if you don't go, you're going to save that money. That's one way to look at it. But the other way to look at it is set aside X amount of dollars and figure out what that will get you, what it will look like to go to New York or Boston or out west to Colorado or whatever it might be. And then once you do that, you start investigating what hotels might cost, like Jody said, what events are going on. Right. So, But you have to come up with a number. So you can work backwards. If you don't do that, nothing's going to happen. Well, so that's and it's, and it's the second thing you need to do. I, I, for this Africa trip for the past two years, I've been eking a little money out of our account every month, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't feel the big kind of gulp when it when we had to pay for everything. But um, I set up a savings account, and I would just store money yeah. in there. Not that it's hidden away from you, but it's not in your normal flow of cash. Right. So I would say set up a budget and then figure out how you can actually you know, save for the retirement within your you know, right. constraints, uh, well, your you, financial constraints. You touched before a little bit on, uh, I think you did, on health, um, health, you know, what kind of health you're in. But you've got to consider that when you are traveling. So your health needs to be a priority. So you want to check health advisories. If you have asthma, again, you don't want to be in New York in the summer. It's too hot. You might want to think about travel insurance. Packing medications is important. Um, consider accessibility. If you're handicapped and you need that kind of access, you got to make sure that the trip will accommodate all And that. we've had to do that, right? So to go to Africa, we have pre-travel healthcare checkups. We had to get different vaccines. You know, we've got different pills to take at different times, right. like for example, for malaria or otherwise. So it's complicated, but the big vision is it's a bucket, bucket right, list right. trip. So it's worth it right. you know, so you've, for sure. So you've decided kind of what you want to do. You have a budget. You've checked health considerations and all of that. Now you want to do research and plan your itinerary. So you don't want to just go to New York. I keep saying New York, but let's yeah. just use New York as an example because it's a wonderful city or Boston. I mean, this weekend in Boston, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to come back. There's so much history. But don't just show up for four or five days. Plan something out. I mean, if you're going to stay in a hotel, you can work with the concierge there, but do a lot of research and come up with something that's a lot of fun. Well, and also, you know, as you're planning your itinerary, plan things that maybe you traditionally would say, I would never do that. So Mark, when we went to Italy a couple of years ago, I had coordinated with a private walking tour through Florence. And for three days leading up to it, Mark was like, I don't want to do this. Right. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this walking tour. I'm not a walking tour guy. I'm mm -hmm. not interested. And I pushed forward because I thought it was something that would be helpful for us for the history of Florence. And you ended up loving it. I did. I did. And it made me think, again, when I was in Boston this weekend, I could see a bunch of walking tours mm. with a guide giving all the history of what happened um, at this place. The tea back, party. The tea party, <laughs> all of that. But I think it's really important to have a good, well-searched itinerary. And if it includes a walking tour, you should give it a shot. Yeah, absolutely. So the next thing is your documentation, right? So ensuring your travel documents are in order will avoid any last minute issues. Do you want to say we just had one of those? No, we didn't have anything. I have my passport renewed. Jody felt that Africa, you have to have a passport six months ahead to get into the country. You need a passport valid the day before. So I did it two months ahead. We're good. Did take longer than I thought. I and get nervous. Jody got a little nervous. I do get nervous when you know your passport's about to expire, right. and I I don't know. Maybe it's old mind school, but I do remember there were certain countries that didn't like you using your passport uh, if well, it was within. The the expiration date. The big thing with all passports, I believe, is it can expire within six months of you um, leaving. That's a problem. So you have to just make sure. So you yeah. have to check that. Are there any local laws if you're traveling to some other countries? It's You have to be aware of what the issues are. And one of the things that our travel agent talked about and even recommended was to register with your embassy if you're going to a foreign co yeah, country. Yeah. Not a you bad know, idea. Register with the embassy so that the embassy knows that you're there. That's a personal choice, but 
that's what embassies, not the only reason, but it's one of the things that embassies will do for you to Listen, be sure. Listen, we've always wanted to go to Israel. And I have a very good friend who was in Israel on Saturday, the day the war broke out. And it took him three days to get out. And it was really, really scary. So if you're going to be going to anywhere, you really want to be prepared and find a way to get out and, and all of that. So... That's not something you can plan for, no. but it was definitely a scary time for him. All right, All right, this next one I took on as my New Year's resolution two years ago. Okay. This next one is packing smart. I was never a great packer. I'm going to go ahead and declare that. I was a big suitcase girl, big suitcase girl, always overweight on the suitcase, mm -hmm. too many clothes, too yeah. many choices. Yeah. But packing appropriately can make your travels more comfortable. Honestly, I found over the past couple of years, and I've gotten better. You have. No, for sure. You have. I mean, I went to Turks and Caicos in a carry-on for seven days. That, to me, was like win, 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 win. Right. Of course, you don't need a lot of, a lot of clothes because you're in a yeah. bathing suit a lot. But a packing list is important. Versatile clothing is important. Some people really enjoy using the packing cubes and taking all the air out of it and yeah, compacting yeah. it down. Um, but one of the things that I know was really important, uh, when we were traveling abroad is, um, adapters and chargers and things for the electronics. Right. I don't know if that's still a thing. And quite honestly, I don't know what we do in Africa about that. I don't know. I'll have to find out, but definitely packing. When we go on this, um, safari, we can only bring one suitcase and it can't weigh more than 25 pounds. I don't know how you're going to do that. I don't I'm going to do, do that, but we're going to figure it out. But packing smart really is important. All right, what about staying safe? You know, I gave the example of my friend in, in Israel. I mean, you can't odds that, but you really want to. And I think didn't we do a video on this being safe? Well, when in you solo travel? traveling, there is. Um, we did some safety yeah. tips for sure. So you want to be aware of your surroundings all the time when you're walking. Keep emergency contacts handy so you can call somebody. Definitely use hotel safes for your valuables. Um, avoid displaying wealth. Don't, you know, don't bring, I don't think you're bringing to bring any jewelry to Africa, no. right? I'm not mm -hmm. going to bring any, um, no local emergency numbers. Let your family know what you're doing and it always is, check travel advisories. It is always good to check the travel advisories. It's also always good to leave a detailed itinerary with somebody back home. Right. So kind of, they know where you're supposed to be, whether you're there or not, they know that you're there. So you've got your trip, you have your itinerary, you know where you're going. You really want to embrace the local culture. Yeah. Right? Food, theater, um, walking tours, whatever. Absolutely. Like what happened over the years in this place you're going to visit? Yeah. You know, this is something that in retirement, we've kind of taken a change in how we do our vacations. We used to vacation to hang out on a beach and just like let go of work and stress yeah. and all that. Just beach vacations. We were beach vacation people. And now we're doing more cultural, embracing cultural learning, you know, visiting local markets, you know, being open minded to what's happening in different countries. That to me feels more interesting at this stage of the game. It is. And, th and then it forces you before you go to do some research and look up some of the local culture look up some of the restaurants right. you want to try or like you said markets the, you know the local markets are so cool um engaging with local people i mean we're starting to use i would say it's 50 50 hotel airbnb and the beauty of an airbnb is you, there's typically a washer and dryer you can right. do your own laundry you can cook so you can save a little money there we can get up early and have coffee so uh but embracing the local culture is really important Okay, so the next one, this is interesting. My daughter just got engaged, um, and uh, the family that she's now going to be a big part of, you know, they do this to the nines, and that is sustainable travel practices. You know, traveling sustainably preserves destinations for future generations, and I will tell you, I think the Mahoney's do a really good yeah, job at they that. they do. They do. And, you know, they, they use public transport, they walk, they participate in conservation activities when they're there. Yeah. They're typically in the wildlife and natural habitat, so they really enjoy that, but they keep it clean and actually clean while they're there. It also reduces your carbon footprint. Footprint. It's yeah. important for it people. It is important. So sustainable travel practices right. are very important. So now you're on your trip and you want to capture and share memories. So 
the iPhones have great cameras now. So capturing a little bit of video, capturing some photos, making a shared folder, mm -hmm. which w we can do. And we can also share it with the kids right? so they can see our new photos as we upload them. So you really want to do that. I think keeping a travel journal is a good idea, and I'm definitely going to do that on the safari. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't think I... Oh, I might have a journal I can do that with. I'm going to take sure. pictures and journal about the picture and what we did each day. Are you going to create a travel blog or a vlog? Sure, let's do that. That would be interesting. Yeah, well, you know? how about we do a bunch of videos on this, on our channel? Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. We're going to, for now, only travel, we're going to do travel vlogging. Oh, there you go. There's the word, vlogging. Vlogging. I, there no, you go. Listen, let's share it. Why not? It'll be kind of cool. That will be good. All right, so... This, I hope this was helpful. Yeah, was I hope it was helpful too. Planning your travel bucket list ensures that you make the most of your retirement adventures, creating lasting memories and enriching your life experiences. So go through this process again. Make a, a list of places you want to go and take the first step towards going on the trip. You know, download our travel bucket list planner template. Do we have that? Yeah, we do. Do we? We're going to create one. All right. You got to create it this week so we can post list it. planner <laughs> template. All right. Um, I think that'll be fun. So start planning the, your list today. Write down all the places you think would be fun to go. Put them in some kind of an order and go through this process that we covered today, the 10 steps, so that you can move towards your dream adventure. This next video, top travel tips when traveling solo is really good for you, even if you are not traveling solo, but we talk about 25 invaluable travel tips to help you kickstart your adventure. So watch this one next.